three nuts. I'm Russ Carson Jr., the founder of Family Tree Nuts. At Family Tree Nuts, we build family trees for people and we produce videos at historic locations and videos that help to honor your ancestors. I'm Jameson Cable, founder of the Kentucky History Podcast, where we talk about anything Kentucky history, events, people, if it has to do with Kentucky, we're going to discuss it. And we've teamed up together to bring you History Nuts. History Nuts is a live show where we talk about, you guessed it, you guessed it history. Right. History seems to be less and less to people today, but we are trying to do everything we can to keep it alive. Absolutely. History is a passion of ours for sure, but it connects to you. Russ, tell us about the best part of the show. You can join in. You can comment and ask questions live. We've got a great topic today and we know you're going to enjoy this episode of History Nuts. Hey and we're live, uh -oh. we're live. What's going on Jameson? <laughs> uh, not much, not much. We are... uh, somebody's calling in. <laughs> yeah but yeah, right off the bat we uh, this is a different kind of episode because uh you know, Jordan, that produces the show, is standing here, well, about three feet away from me over here. So, uh, <laughs> right here, right here in the uh, international headquarters of Family Tree Nuts. So, I thought but, uh, I thought we had changed the format and we were going to a live call-in show. I was getting a little nervous. We can do that. We can do that. Absolutely, <laughs> for sure. So, but uh, we got a cool show tonight, don't we? Yes. No? Yes. No? Very you cool. Don't one. Like it? I, I, well, no, I'm I'm surprised we waited this long to uh, to cover this fella. Yeah, <laughs> or, really. It's I guess really maybe this of... expedition. Expedition. I guess I should yeah, say. Too. Yeah, I have a trouble yeah. with that word too. Uh, I can't tell you how many videos that I've had to uh, say the word expedition over and over again <laughs> instead of exhibition, ex Ford expedition. Uh, yeah. You know, kind of thing like that. It's a yeah, hard word to say, what, isn't it? That's exactly what I think of. Yeah, yeah Ford. Yeah, anyway. yeah, yeah. Exhibition, exhibition, kind of but, thing. So, but the monuments, another one. Monument, mo monument. You say that several times. Monument. But, uh, but, Monumental. Uh, yeah. What's going on? What's going on over there in uh, your neck of the woods? Oh man, we're working hard. We're back to school five days a week. Uh, wow. Classes are. Filling up, so uh, I got a long. I got a long two days ahead of me, I believe. I know my son hasn't. Uh, he doesn't go to school tomorrow, and I think Friday might be virtual. But it, th this Friday mm -hmm. equals the last time they went to school a year ago. So it'll. He went to school exactly ten yeah. days in a calendar year. So craziness. Wow. That's, but in two weeks uh, yeah, they go back four days a week. Crazy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But you got the. So yeah, we're we're five days a week. Uh, Lincoln. Uh, started this Monday, five days a week. Uh, there, there are kids that are still PLA, but majority of the kids are in school. I, you I you guys say. need that schooling over there. You need a little extra schooling. <laughs> what I've heard. But, uh, <laughs> but, uh, what do you mean? I don't know. <laughs> but uh, yeah, man. So we're, we've got a, uh, a cool show tonight. Make sure you guys uh, chime in. Let us know where you guys are watching from. Um, Chime in, ask us some questions and some comments about this mm -hmm. uh, topic. It's a topic that so few know about, except for people that live in the area or just genuinely history buffs. Mm -hmm. But it is pretty mm -hmm. amazing story, isn't it? It is um, pretty uh, interesting. Major ties to Kentucky, of course. So, um, but really, I mean, a, a pretty big, a pretty big deal. And like you said, people don't really know about it as much, or unless they've really kind of looked into it. Uh, a lot of people, you know, they stop at Daniel Boone, man. They assume it's Boone. Sure. Uh, everything leads back to Boone, but yeah. not, not well, in this case. So. 19 years before Daniel Boone mm -hmm. ever even smelled Kentucky, you know, and 25 mm -hmm. years before settlement. So it, yeah, that's, that that's hard yeah. to fathom. We, we say them dates in history, and we don't really realize what we're saying. We just read over dates. But man, that's twenty five mm -hmm. years ago. I mean, twenty five years ago was nineteen ninety six. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. I was a, uh, I was a youngling, for sure. You were young, yeah, yeah. You know what happened? This this Friday, like two days from from today, 
or yeah, that two days from now, uh, 25 years ago, uh, I actually got married. So, oh, uh, yeah, we're gonna hit that happy anniversary. anniversary here. We got married yeah. in Guam, the United States Whoa. territory of Guam. So, cool, uh, definitely a big cool. story there. I only knew uh, my wife for two and a half months, yeah. and uh, here we are before wow. we got married, and here we are 25 years later. So, oh, uh, well, that congratulations, lot, man. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> Dr. Thomas Walker. I know you didn't chime in to hear yes. about that. So, uh, who is Dr. <laughs> Thomas Walker? Well, uh, as far as his birth, are we talking about? He was born in uh, King and Queen County, Virginia. Um, he, physician, uh, planter, explorer. I guess explorer would that would that, I guess, would that be the better term to say he was an explorer or would yeah. just more say adventurer? Uh, I would guess explorer. Yeah, adventurer. Yeah. Right. Right. <laughs> Uh, yeah, and speaking mm -hmm. of that, uh, a lot of these titles he doesn't have yet because he is, this is pre-French and Indian War, you know, yeah. kind of thing. So yeah. this is, this is, that's how far back we're going here. So, um, so yeah, he went, I think he went to, he went to William and Mary College and uh, mm -hmm. became a, uh, well, he wasn't an physician. official physician, but uh, he was enough of a physician for the, that time that time period, of course. <laughs> so, uh, somebody trusted him enough to say, "Hey, hey, hey, can you sew this up, or can you can you give me some help here?" Uh, right, right. I, I don't and really I'm know. I'm going to talk about some of that stuff here and down down the road down the story here. But uh, he 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 was involved with his uh, church too, wasn't he? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, he was. He was. <laughs> Yeah, he was he, one of his uh, prou his most proud things that he said was uh, he was a vestryman, um, and for about forty yeah, what, years. What what exactly is a vestryman? It's a vestryman. You're, you're, you're not a minister, but uh, I guess the best way I could describe it is maybe like a deacon, you know, uh -huh, in his church, uh -huh. um, a, le a yeah, church right. leader. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Did you hear that? Yeah, that's a that's a, a new, I heard that's Siri. an unusual. Siri, where? Did you hear Siri? <laughs> <laughs> so. No, I do not. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, man. Yeah, man. Don says that he's a uh, hello gentleman from Southern Ohio, and Cheryl says she can't wait to hear about him. Uh, we're coming in and out. Hopefully, mm -hmm. we're we're uh, back to normal then. So, uh, so he's a vestryman, and uh, the story begins in this story on July twelfth of seventeen forty nine. He basically gets commissioned by the Loyal mm -hmm. Land Company to uh, lead an expedition of exploration uh, into the Kentucky Territory, basically Western Virginia, is what they would say. So, mm -hmm. yeah, um, and th they give him a what a grant of what eighty thousand acres, eight hundred thousand, uh, eight hundred thousand, yeah, eight hundred thousand, which uh, is yeah, a lot. Eight that's a lot of acres, isn't it? Eight hundred thousand acres. Uh, he was actually one of the founders of the uh, the Loyal Land Company. Uh, do, do you know? And this is just a question. Do you know any of the other founders of it that were I don't. involved? Uh, I, I, that was a question. That whenever I was kind of reading up, I was like, you know, who else was involved in this? But um, I don't know either. Well, it was, maybe somebody it, can find out for us. You know, they were commissioned by the by the. Uh, the government by the king, you know, kind of thing. So yes. that's why they were the yeah. loyal land company. So, um, yeah, not exactly sure. Uh, you got me on that one there, but uh, uh, you finally yeah, asked me a question I, I, I didn't either. know. That's the first time in about a year that you asked me <laughs> one question that I didn't know the answer. So yeah, that's, that's not true. You were batting a hundred percent, man. <laughs> For sure. But uh, like I say, the, the, well, the biggest thing on the expedition that they did yeah, uh, technical difficulties. Uh, Don's, Don Gillum says uh, hello from the Arkansas River Valley in Clarksville, Arkansas. And the, one of the biggest things that uh, happened during the expedition is that they named stuff along the way Cumberland. Cumberland Gap, yeah. Cumberland River, Cumberland this, Cumberland that. Who oh, the that. heck is Cumberland? Yeah. The Duke. The Duke of Cumberland? Yes. Is that who we're... Is that yes. who's who's the big big dog here? Yeah, yeah. The Duke of Everything Cumberland. Everything is named after. But everything you know is named who, after him. Do Do you know who he is? Like what he what he's famous for? No, not really. I mean, I assume he's a 
uppity royal, right? <laughs> well, and he's the he's the son he's the son of the king, but uh, he uh-huh. was the son of many say the un uh, the unlegitimate king. Um, the legitimate king was Bonnie mm-hmm. Prince Charlie and the Jacobites that uh, were originally from Scotland. And it's a big thing in Scottish uh, lore, Scottish songs, Scottish uh, traditions and history and things. And Bonnie Prince Charlie rose up a Highland army to uh, invade England and take back his rightful throne. And end of the story is they were defeated by the Duke of Cumberland and uh, de- mm. secured the, the crown for the, the king. And... So Cumberland was a was a rock star at that time. He was George Washington, oh, yeah. you know, at that time. He yeah. was somebody that uh, was real popular because that was in 1745 that he defeated it, and they're taken off there in 1750. So uh, mm. that's why that's, they named so many that's things. That's where it comes him. from. Yeah. So a lot of yeah. people that are really into their Scottish heritage do not like the name Cumberland. So uh, I've always kind of thought, well, ah. come on, man. So, but... But yeah, it makes sense. So, so yeah, they named a ton of things out here, and a lot of the things are like kept their names through the maps and journals that mm-hmm. they made. But several things have changed, and we're going to mention some of those too. Um, and uh, yeah, it said that they 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 came through that that gap, and they had a little rum there, and they uh, drank to the health of the Duke of Cumberland uh, in that famous gap. <laughs> which, uh, you know, they called Cave Gap before that is what the Indians were calling it. Mm-hmm. Um, but they weren't the mm-hmm. first white people into Kentucky. Um, you know, there was many long hunters and stuff that were out there, you know, that you know weren't supposed to be out there, but uh, yeah. uh, they were definitely the first official group out into the area. Yep, yep, yep. Um, so I, I, I was, whenever I was reading this and I was thinking... <clears throat> This was a pretty massive expedition, um, and maybe if you know you're you're listening, you can uh, chime in and give us your thoughts too. Would you compare this at the time? You know, I mean, this was 1750, uh, you know, way uh, 1749. That that was the years, of course. <laughs> but um, would you compare this to like was, was this the moon expedition of the time, or or, or is that they just too gone. big of an exagger or too big of a thing? I mean, I don't know. I mean, they, wasn't, were they weren't the place. first hunters. So, I mean, how would you compare it? Or what's your thoughts on that? It's a pretty big deal. I mean, they were going to mm-hmm. a place that they didn't know what they were going to run into. Um, but mm-hmm. they did not They did have oxygen. And, uh, you know, they didn't have to worry about <laughs> They stayed on ground. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, but that's a pretty yeah. neat analogy there. So, Well, yeah. I, you know, me just thinking, like, you know, this is a... Um, you know, like you said, going into uncharted places, that one, you know, no real establishments. They're kind of on their own. Um, obviously, the elements would be a lot different. Um, but for the time period and for the day, you know, this is a, a pretty big deal, a pretty big uh, uh, adventure. You know, but, yeah. Uh, yeah. Maybe not. So maybe sure. moon landing is just a little too big. Moon landing might just be a little too big of a comparison. But they were definitely venturing off into the unknown kind of thing and, and without help. Mm-hmm. You know, no, and nobody yeah. would uh, know where to even find them and things. And they, they took they took buffalo trails and Native American trails the majority of the time. Um, but other than that, uh, they were on their own for sure. One of the cool things that, that uh, Dr. Thomas Walker did is he kept a journal uh, the whole time. He kept it, uh, which has been incredibly valuable uh, to the expedition because we know exactly where they were and what they did. Um, some yeah. of the things we have to speculate where they were, but... Uh, it was is incredible that you can go back and read that, but but the purpose for that is that uh, you know under Virginia law, in order to claim land, you had to build a cabin. So that's definitely something mm-hmm. that they did, and we'll we'll talk about that in a few in a little bit there. But you had to put a plant a, a, a crop of corn in, and uh, build a permanent uh, um, residence, and you actually have to come mm-hmm. back and harvest it too, you know, in order to claim that land. Uh, but, uh, they didn't do that, but we'll get into that here in a second too. But, uh, um, yeah, anything you, I've got, I've got some excerpts from the journal I was going to read. Is there anything else well, you wanted to add to that part? Well, uh, well, I mean, they're just the, you know, they, they end up building the first, you know, uh, house in Kentucky. 
Uh, and I'm sure we'll get into that. But yeah, the journal, just the aspect and the historical, I guess, uh, significance of a journal is so, so powerful, I guess to say, because you have the thoughts of the person that you, you're talking about. So the fact that he kept his journal is um, uh, super resourceful, I guess, uh, very good. Glad he did yeah. it, I guess, out of all things. He, he kept a journal. That's a good. But yeah, uh, well, we can go ahead and get into some of the some of the journal yeah. stuff. Yeah, and, and I'll read some about the journal here, but uh, interrupt me, you know, kind of thing. So I'm not just reading, you know, and comment on these things. But uh, it's really cool because it's like a Facebook post, you know. It's, uh, <laughs> you know, the things that uh, he was, he was, he was, uh, everything they saw and they were doing that day. You know, he was basically doing his tweets. So. <laughs> are we going to get a post that says um, I'm never going to do this again I can't believe or you are no longer my friend <laughs> you ruined our relationship well they dang Don't sure had some again. hardships they dang sure had some <laughs> hardships some pretty wild things that happened to him there um, Vicky says that uh, she is kin to uh, Daniel Walker his son and uh, George H.M. Walker and his son Harden Walker uh, Don says, uh, East, Southeastern Kentucky had a gap for migration. Yes. And, uh, Cheryl says during Walker's expedition, it's a long one, during Walker's expedition, the Loyal Land Company's claims, he gave names to many topographical features, including Cumberland Gap, which was also the party built for the Anglo-Saxon house cabin in Kentucky and kept the daily journal on the trip. Walker would be named for the Loyal Land Company, 1750. Whew. There's a whole bunch more, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> come on. I know you copied and pasted that. You didn't type that out. <laughs> so, uh, come on, Sam. But uh, all right. So they, the, the trip went from basically March 7th to July 13th. And, uh, mm -hmm. you know, they, they stepped off. Um, they, they made entries most days except for the Sabbath. Um, some, some days of the Sabbath had, had a few entries and things of what they did, but it was pretty minor stuff, but, uh, obviously mm -hmm. not going to read the whole Dabburn journal there for four months, but I, I jotted down a couple of the highlights that were on there though. And, uh, um, one of the things I thought was pretty cool is that they, uh, they came up on the brotherhood of Euphrates. Do you know what that is? The brotherhood of Euphrates. I do not. It's, uh, sounds pretty interesting. <laughs> yeah, Go ahead. It's, uh, it's like a religious sect that was that you know in the first few days after they started heading to the wilderness, uh, they came up on mm -hmm. a religious sect to call themselves the Brotherhood of Euphrates, and they uh, they didn't shave their beards, they did not sleep in the beds, they uh, they didn't eat meat. Uh, unmarried uh -huh. people lived in a uh, like a commune kind of thing. And mm -hmm. uh, they yeah. didn't baptize people, but they were cordial and, and kept the Sabbath. So uh, the United well, States now, was a land I of religious freedom. these were European as well, right? European yes. descent. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, that's so, a, uh, pretty cool. That uh, little, little. You know, yeah, it has weird. a bit of a cult feel to it, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and on March 27th, he put in there that it snowed on him till noon. And that seems to be a that big theme of this trip is, mm -hmm. man, they had some daggone weather. Can you know? We, yeah, and even in, like, you know, you, you don't think about March having so much snow. And, and it does snow in March for, uh, from time to time. But there's even more snow in, on this journey that kind of, you know, a bit different, unusual. Well, I don't want to say unusual, but just not what you'd expect. Right. Yeah, it was uh, definitely a time that... Uh, it, we can't even fathom the, the, to be out in the wilderness. Be like on a camping trip for, for four months straight in the elements yeah. you know, without um, hardly any shelter kind of thing. And most of us wouldn't be able to survive two or three days that way, would we? No, no, no. <laughs> nope. Yeah. So uh, it snowed on them. Um, one, one of the early nights, uh, the dogs were uneasy. And they were wondering why the mm. dogs were, were so crazy. And they, they woke up the next day and found out. And they found uh, tracks of about 20 Native Americans that were walking around their camp at night. Mm. So uh, <laughs> that would have been an interesting, uh, holy cow, guys, what was going on last night? So uh, mm. they were getting checked now, out. Most of the territory they're coming into, it would probably be Cherokee. Is that correct? I mean, that, that would probably be the, 
Well, the area, I guess, of, of Native Americans. Starting out there in Virginia, Western Virginia, and mm-hmm. uh, and they were they went down the Clinch River Valley, which would you know today would be modern day Tennessee, and they mm-hmm. would be they would have mostly Cherokee, yeah, but you know in Kentucky there was a whole lot of Shawnee, Mingos, uh, Wyandots, yeah, uh, they were here all over the all over the area. So, um, Cheryl said no cut and paste. <laughs> so, but uh, yeah, she's got so, it. She's got it. On April 1st was was one of the Sabbaths, and uh, Dr. Walker puts in there that he carved his name on a birch tree. And that's one of the things that he has in his entries multiple times, um, mm-hmm. how he carved his name on birch trees. And th- just a side note, it's kind of a tradition of the time. There's a tree out in western Tennessee, I think it's pretty close to Jackson or Memphis, Tennessee, that's got Daniel Boone's name on it. Uh, from, uh, hmm. and I think it says 18, eight, or no, 1770, I think. And we know that Kentucky, uh-huh. you know, that Boone was wandering around Kentucky for a year. And you're thinking, why in the world was he all the way out there? But, uh, it's one way that they would document where they were. Hey, mm-hmm. I was here first. That's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> his entry a, a on bit of competition. Yeah, yeah. And his entry on April 6th was it was too wet to move. That was it. I mean, I guess it must have been a lot of rain, I guess. I, you know, too wet to move just must have been a downpour, complete downpour. But the next day, what's it doing? Yeah. The next day on April 7th, it snowed most of the day. So uh, here so, we go. We're talking about snow they, again. And got to uh, be in Kentucky if they're. With that kind of weather. Uh, is that what they say? Yeah. <laughs> Changes <laughs> if you don't like it, wait a day or two, right? Or wait a few minutes. And during yeah. that same day that uh, a bear attacked one of their dogs. And that dog was injured. And uh, they ended up shooting the bear. And that dog got to ride on the horseback uh, for the, until he was healed up. So you think he well, milked well, it? Well, you got it. You, <laughs> you probably did. You know, you got to take care of your dog, but you know the dog. Dogs, dogs are smart. They'll they'll hang out. You know, <laughs> let me ride on the horse. I'm going to be okay. Yeah, and this was <laughs> definitely not the uh, last time that they came in contact with bears for sure. Um, mm-hmm. It was it was April 13th that they came through uh, what they would it was called Cave Gap before, which is now Cumberland Gap. Uh, so April 13th of 1750. So that's an important date. Uh, when they crossed into uh, technically modern-day Kentucky and that famous place mm-hmm. where uh, uh, they say over 300,000 of our ancestors passed through. Yeah, so it's, and what, like, that? so that would have been probably in about 30, 40 years, those people would start rolling in quite heavily. Yeah. I guess yeah. that would be about right, yeah. Way ahead yeah. of that. You know, we say that loosely. You know, when you say the, the date 17... 17- 50 and you say 1780 that doesn't seem like that much of a difference but uh there was a good chunk of time, a long time I, I, yeah you know when i talk about history people lump it together you know they think the revolutionary war and the civil war were back to back so uh, <laughs> no yeah and 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 april april 16th uh, what do you think the weather was like I mean, it's rained, it's snowed, it's got to be a tornado or something not, or, not, not or yet, repeat. But it's, uh, it's pouring rain again, you know. So, uh, um, Doctor, this they've been on, they've been gone for about a month at this point, and uh, Doctor Thomas Walker puts in his notes that uh, he made him some shoes. His, she wore his shoes out, so he made him, in his words, Indian shoes. So I guess that would be uh, uh, moccasins, wouldn't it? I, I would assume so. Yeah, that would that would yeah. be the top. Uh, Russ, what's the latest you've ever seen it snow in Kentucky? Have you ever seen it snow in April? I think so. I think yeah. so. Uh, a few years ago, we were at in Pine Mountain up in you know, Harlan, that that part of the state, and uh, we were it was it was about April April seventeenth, sixteenth, right around that time, and it snowed. It snowed. It snowed in the morning, and the whole place was covered in snow. But by the evening. All the snow had melted, and it was like six degrees. Oh wow! Craziest weather ever. <laughs> yeah, but but you know it changes. Up, up there at Pine Mountain, what were you doing up there? Mm-hmm. Uh, Pine Mountain Settlement School, um, really awesome place to go if you want to oh, get yeah. away from everywhere. 
uh, it's really cool. We we take field trips there um, with with fifth graders uh, and stay a few a few nights, a few days. Um, it's a bummer we've not been able to go the past you know this year or or last year, um, but it, it's a really good place, really cool, very yeah. Uh, yeah. Has to check that out. You should do a video Oscillator. there when you go to that when you go up there. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. The next day on April seventeenth, they uh, found and named the Cumberland River. So there you uh, it's go. A big r- river, you know, that starts up there in the mountains and rolls all the way to uh, through Western Kentucky into Tennessee and all the way. I think the national. So let me ask you this question too. It's called the Cumberland River, and I'm doing the county by county, like names and all that sort of thing. So it's the Cumberland River is named after the Duke of Cumberland, right? So is right. the river, um, so is the, you know Cumberland the town technically named after the river, or does it all go back to the Duke? Anything with the name Cumberland does that go to the Duke? Well, I'd say the town wasn't there, you know, for Tottenham Thomas mm-hmm. Walker to name it, so. Uh... Um, I doesn't uh, isn't the headwaters of the Cumberland River in Cumberland? That's in Harlan County. Mm-hmm. There's Cumberland so, County too. Is that, is, that, is that how it works? I don't know. I'd have to do, look up uh, the where Cumberland <laughs> got its name. I know they were the Redskins at one time. The little you know, one of those schools. That, well, no, uh, I'm pretty sure Cumberland. They they say it's named after the river, but okay. the river is named after the Duke. So is there? Sure. A line of naming, or do we just roll with whatever? I guess when you're the first person okay. there, you can name whatever the heck you want, right? So, you know, <laughs> if it's America, or if I'm standing on it, it's America. You ever heard that before? So, but, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you can name it whatever you want. So, but uh, yeah, man. So, and in, in, in April 19th, they talk about being at a large lick where animals were all over the place. Um, I don't know this for a fact, but knowing the geography and the, the, how many miles it was from there, they had to have been right there at Flat Lick, at, uh, which was the, uh, the, the confluence of the uh, Warrior's Path and uh, the Wilderness Road and Boone Trace, Skaggs Trace, all came together right there. Uh, later on, of course, this was way before all that stuff. So, and, uh, so on, on April the 23rd, they arrived at their spot that they figured that they would build their cabin. Uh, they drew lots, mm-hmm. and uh, Dr. Thomas Walker and the two other guys, I think Ambrose Payne and uh, uh, Colby, uh, uh, shoot. Chew? Um, huh? Colby Chew? Colby Chew? Yeah, Colby Chew, yeah, yeah, they went on. Oh, yeah, I forgot to say, back there when they was at, fl- at what we think is Flatlick, Ambrose Payne got bit in the knee by a bear. So that that was his, uh, that's pretty interesting. And he's going to have some more interesting things to happen to him along the way here. That's a good good story to tell tell your kids. Yeah, I mentioned that, yeah. So the rest of the party stayed back um, to build a cabin and put some corn Mm -hmm. in. And I think there's a, uh, uh, where there's a, there's a Dr. Thomas Walker State Park that, uh, have you ever been there before? I have not. It's a place uh, definitely need to visit. Uh, yeah, they've got a replica of the cabin. Jordan, can you show that mm-hmm. video? It's a kind of thing. They've got a replica of the cabin there. Watching it. Is the video coming? Yeah, there you go. Oh, picture. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah. that's pretty cool. That's the cabin there. Some Thanks. people say it looks like a shed. Kind of <laughs> yeah, say, pretty small I'll, pretty small i don't i don't know if they all could fit in there but right um, but the thing is that, it didn't matter how big it was you know and, and that's not the real mm-hmm. cabin that's a replica obviously but yeah uh, it, it uh well, they know that they made them small because it didn't matter they just needed to have a uh you know a cabin and 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 plant a crop of corn and that's what the uh the the, the group that stayed behind worked on and mm-hmm. the rest of them they went around uh, which modern day Laurel County and made a loop over there and uh, took mm-hmm. about five days on their own and they ran into a, some a big mess of laurel patches and things like that. And that's mm-hmm. you know, hard to travel through and that's where Laurel County gets its name. There you go. Uh, yes, so Laurel County is lo- the laurel, is, are they laurel, laurel trees or laurel bushes? 
Bushes. Bushes. Yeah. yeah. And then, so they're right there, and Laurel County is right next to Rockcastle County. Um, so they get on Rockcastle River. Uh, obviously, they use it for some transportation. Uh, and then they name it the Lawless River. Yeah. But it has then changed. It's then changed you know, 10, 10, 15 years later to the Rockcastle River, uh, but the Lawless River. And we talked about this before. You know, is it was it lawless because of the rapids, or was there a guy on the the group with the last name Lawless? So they named the, the Lawless. Yeah, right? one of the parties was uh, was uh, mm-hmm. uh, Lawless, and th- during the, and that's one of the things that they do along the way is they name things after each other that's on there. You know, like hey, this is Jameson Hill. You know, and and uh, <laughs> you know, you know, this is uh, Cable Mountain, and this Carson is, uh, Cave. <laughs> yeah, 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 Carson Creek. You know, <laughs> stuff like that. So they named stuff after themselves, or people that they knew, or or royalty and things like that. All along the way, some of those names have stayed, and some of them are long mm-hmm. gone. Um, they mm-hmm. got changed. Yeah. So we think that. Uh, uh, you know, following the journals and the topography and maps and things that uh, we, we think certain things that they named, we think we know where they are, I guess is what I'm saying. But uh, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. So they yeah. get back to so the I group. guess that was their sales pitch. That, yeah, that was probably their sure. sales pitch. Uh, hey, come with us and we'll name something after you. Right. <laughs> Your name will live forever. You might be bit by a bear and a snake and everything else, but hey, you'll live in yeah. infamy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, that's true. Well, it's a bit funny you mentioned Snake right there because uh, when they got back uh, to the group there, they found out that one of the snakes had, or, or one of the horses had got his nose bit by a snake. Oh. It's horrible. <laughs> the one place you probably don't want it to be bit would be, well, maybe there might be another place or two, but <laughs> the nose would be bad. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. So they, and, and also Colby Chu that was with them, uh, he slipped down the side of a side of a hillside on his horse and got beat up quite a bit too. So, uh, and twisted his, sprained his knee. So now we got a couple of guys limping along the way, you know? Um, Yeah. So then they start heading back off again, and 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 I and I bring this up too. On May first, uh, they were they were uh, chilling out there, and uh, another horse got bit on the nose by a snake. Gee. So that happened Man. twice, kind of thing. And they they used like a bear oil uh, uh, ointment uh, to do that. It's there's all kinds of treatments that they, that they would do during those times that uh, was very unique. Doing some. Doing some um, Essential oils to take care of those snake bites. <laughs> yeah, I don't think they had any of those. Yeah, right. <laughs> and then, and then on May the sixth, remember Ambrose Powell that uh, got bitten on the on in the knee mm. there. Well, uh, he tripped and fell and sprained his other knee. <laughs> uh, he can't win from losing it. Now no, he's, he's going to be on two crutches. Where, where, where they're at it this time is my, they're about as far west as they go when this happens. They're mm-hmm. they're all the way far away from everything. Here he is. He's got a bear biting one knee and a sprained knee and the other knee, and horses are getting bit by the snakes. You know, so uh, quite a, quite a rugged time for sure, and it definitely wasn't the end of it all. So they're um, probably they're probably ready to turn around. They're probably like, all right, let's let's turn around here. We got to right. walk back just as far as we came. Yeah, well, and, and, and it, well, they were about the furthest. It was time for them to start heading back east because uh, they had went about as far west. And there's many entries in the journal there over several days that they were basically in Rockcastle County area. And mm-hmm. it's mm-hmm. a place that uh, people that were on Boone Trace and, and, and even the Wilderness Road, they hated Rockcastle County too. <laughs> because it's so <laughs> rugged right there. I mean, you're going down uh, creek banks and stuff before you get there, but you've, it, it, it's, mm-hmm. it's, it's rough going through Rock Castle. And uh, as soon as yes. you get out of Rock Castle, you're in the bluegrass region, you know, the nice rolling region. It, op- it opens region, up. Right? Yeah, yep. it's the last little place. It, Jameson, where is it where you're from? 
Yeah, so yeah, I was gonna say so. If you think of like Rock Castle <laughs> County, and if anybody is you know, from Kentucky, you've probably t- taken I seventy five and gone right through Rock Castle County. Well, if you go to the east of Rock Castle County, you're gonna be in that rugged or more rugged terrain, like you know, around Livingston, the river, and, and so forth. But if you go to the west of uh, I seventy five, that's that's when you in, enter in the bluegrass. It's it's a lot more hills. Not really any mountains or you know cliff areas, nothing like that. It's it, it it really changes in Rock Castle from eastern Kentucky to central Kentucky. Sure so. does, sure does, absolutely. Yeah. And uh, May the tenth, they all sat around and uh, made shoes again. They made uh, Indian shoes. They wore out their second pair of shoes oh, on yeah. their trip. That that you know that ain't bad. They're they're, they're putting uh, miles on them, man. They get they got to. I, Literally, um, yeah, putting them miles on, <laughs> you know, so um, May 31st, moving on a few more weeks, they uh, set up camp um, and they didn't know it, but uh, they found out that they had set very near a wolf's den that had mm. uh, several wolves. And uh, are you still there, Jameson? I'm still here. Yes. Can okay. you hear me? I think we're frozen. All right. in, but I can hear you. But, uh, yeah, they set up camp in a, near a wolf's den. So uh, all night long they're getting, you know, the wolves and things uh, howling and wolf scratching. And, yeah, can you imagine? <laughs> can you imagine that? I mean, no, you can't not, just pick up and leave. I, it. How, think of how dark it is. Yeah. And I don't think, uh, you know, you're going to sleep too well either. No. They said they shot at them that, several you know. times, you know, to keep them out of there. But, uh, you know, kind of, I mean, man, oh, man, what a uh, – I mean, these guys were really seriously out in the wilds and things like that, and, mm-hmm. and definitely a different mm-hmm. type of uh, men than not most people are yeah. today. So. <laughs> I hear a bunch of oldies outside. I'm like, okay, it's time to go in. <laughs> <laughs> That's for sure. So going on to June 4th, and they think by this point in time, they're somewhere in modern day uh, uh, near Paintsville, Johnson County kind of thing. Uh-huh. Um, mm-hmm. June the 4th, they're setting up camp They're getting ready to get their tent poles out and stuff like that. Getting ready to set their tent up. A big black cloud rose up, starts pouring rain. What? Then it starts pouring hail and here comes massive winds and there you blew go. their tent away, blew trees down <laughs> all around them. It might've been a small, uh, um, tornado or something like that. <laughs> And all the men just scattered in all directions and uh, trying to find some shelter out there. Can you imagine Can you imagine mm-hmm. this? Being out in the that, I mean, wilderness? where would they go? Yeah, where do you have to go? But, and the shelter that you have, as in trees, are literally falling down. Where are you going to go? <laughs> right. Um, <laughs> I guess looking for a rock cliff or something like that around you mm-hmm. or something. But, uh, yeah, just a, these guys had a heck of a trip, didn't they? Mm-hmm. Yep. So, so the next morning, they go to get back on the trail, but they can't find the trail because of all the trees that were down. <laughs> what? 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 Do you do what, now? what <laughs> I, I guess you point point east and get the marching out. <laughs> yeah. What else can yeah. you do? Yeah, yeah I've uh, I could tell you multiple stories about me trying to get through the woods after hurricanes, and it's not easy kind of thing so Mm -hmm. uh um yeah so uh go ahead i was gonna say so journal writing was a was you know probably not the main priority but uh, he got it done (laughs) yeah you're right 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 well if you read his entries they're usually just a couple of sentences you know kind of thing like a Mm -hmm. facebook post you know so uh, he can only use what is a hundred characters for twitter back then so he had to (laughs) make sure (laughs) <laughs> but, uh, yeah. So moving on, June nineteenth. Yeah, moving on there. Yeah, yeah, June June nineteenth. This time they're in modern day West Virginia, of course. But uh, they had a big uh, bull buffalo that would mm-hmm. not stop harassing them and attacking them, and they had to. They were forced to shoot the thing. <laughs> so, how many different animals have they had encounters with mm-hmm. along the way For- here? Yeah, you know. Mm-hmm. Snake bites. Force to put, put them down. Yeah. <laughs> wow. 
kind of thing. You know, so, that, that, uh, that, well, and, when you think of two, you think of wolves, and you know you, you don't really have wolves in Kentucky anymore. Um, no. And really, I mean, you have bears, but they're they're very very scarce. I guess you don't see Rockcastle. many bears at all. But, yeah, basically. Oh no, that's the Sasquatch. I'm sorry, <laughs> I, I forgot. No, those aren't bears. Those aren't bears, man. Those that's that's just normal population. All right. <laughs> Cornbread <laughs> Mafia. So. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah. So the next day, though, after they shot the bull on, on June 20th, uh, uh, Dr. Thomas Walker's uh, horse had something happen to him. You want to guess what happened? Oh, snake bite, man. Snake can't, bite. Can't the third can't daggone it. horse is bit by a snake. And this time he doesn't have any bear oils or anything with him, so he uses uh, some fatty meat to smear all over the horse's nose. So huh. it's pretty wild. Man, it's, it keeps on being the, the nose. I, I guess these horses are like sniffing around for stuff in the brush. Eating, Is that how they're raising. getting bit? Yeah. Yeah. Get, getting down there low and they get yeah. struck. Um, yeah. It's also yeah. the next several fatty meat. days. Go ahead. I was going to say fatty meat <laughs> saves the day, supposedly. Fatty meat, yeah, remember that. Uh, <laughs> it, pretty much everything I eat is fatty meat. I mean, so, but. but uh, yeah, you, you should be snake repellent, man. You that's be right. Good. <laughs> yeah, I don't have to worry about snakes because I love my pig. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, the next several days of entries, he makes many references uh, to, he called it coal land, uh, you know, C O A L, mm -hmm. coal land. And there's many other entries where he saw coal all over the place. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people say he discovered, you know, large coal fields, you know, in the mm -hmm. region and things. And uh, he's going through central west, modern day West Virginia uh, mm -hmm. over there and finding coal lands. It was just, he talks about how difficult it is to travel. Oh, man. The, the coal, the coal in eastern Kentucky and West Virginia, I mean, the coal crops are literally coming out of the ground. Yeah. Um, that's how I guess you know rich it is, and uh, rich it is to this to this day. Uh, I did read something. I can't think of the guy's name that could have possibly uh, saw coal before him, but I cannot remember who it was. I, I highly, I don't think it. I think it might have been a little bit later than Walker was. Um, but yeah, the coal was just so rich; it was just I mean, literally busting out of the earth. Sure. Um, yeah, so. it's unbelievable kind of thing. So. Um, June 29th, they entered uh, the Greenbrier area, and they, they, they thought they knew where they were at that point, um, back into civilization. And on, June, on, on July the 7th, they ran into uh, five men, the first people that they had seen. Um, they hadn't even seen Native Americans on their trip, so, uh, which is kind of hard yeah. to believe. And you know, to go on such a journey like that and never run into mm -hmm. any of them. And yep. uh, they they uh, they told them that about seven or eight miles up the up the creek there was a little civilization, and so they go mm -hmm. and uh, stay with them. Well, of course they shaved, and then they made new shoes. Made new shoes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and uh, got rid of their raggedy clothes, you know, because they're they're making you know buckskins and things, you know, mm -hmm. leathers all along the way too. And uh, they, they came back to that small community. Um, that community that uh, helped them out was uh, aggravated because at the time and wasn't as very hospitable. They didn't have a lot to give them because at the time they said that they were constantly having a big problem with uh, Indians were robbing them, mm -hmm. they were mm -hmm. stealing everything they had. And uh, uh, so, well, they, going back to the Native Americans and not running into any of them, but they were probably in uh, many probably some of the first Europeans that Native Americans were even seeing, if, I, yeah. if you know what, I guess in the Kentucky-ish area. Right. You know? So, sure. You know, they, they might have been keeping their distance just to see what was, see what they were doing. Yeah, I'm sure they were. I'm sure they were watching them. There's multiple journals where they came across uh, uh, houses of Native Americans that they had, you know, like, mm -hmm. like camping communities or, or uh, hunting, com hunting mm -hmm. camp, you know, communities and stuff. They, but there was nobody there at the time, so yeah, they just kept their distance and trying to wonder what the heck these guys were doing, you know, out there. So um, next couple of days, the men start getting their horses shotted. Guys start splitting off and going home. And on July thirteenth, at about noon, Walker puts in his journal, got home. So uh, 
thus ends that uh, four month journey. Um, he even lists the amount of game that they killed along the way. Uh, he says they killed 13 buffalo, eight elk, 53 bears, 20 deer, mm. which I thought that was odd. He shot, they shot two and a half times the bears they did deer. And uh, <laughs> yeah, four wild, just four wild geese, 150 uh-huh. turkeys, a ton of small game. And uh, he said they could have killed three times the amount of game if they needed it. You know, so that was an important entry yeah. that uh, there was plenty of so uh, rich. Foodie. I mean, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, how many how many people did we ever stay? How many went with him? I think there was six. Just six. I mean, that's a lot of. Uh, they ate pretty good, I would say, for six people. Yeah. yeah. Why not? It was there. Like I said, they could have killed yeah. more if they had to. They ate along the way. I mean, what else yeah. are you going to do at camp at night? You know, but uh, yeah. So, did you know that? Uh, see, this is this is hard to, to grasp how early in American history this is. I mean, this is before the French and Indian War. Um, that land was up for grabs, and people were trying to claim it. Uh, Spanish yep. and the French were in that area too. But um, did did you know that the once he got back, they made plans for him to uh, find a waterway to the Pacific. Wow! So he would have been ahead of uh, Lewis and Clark then, wouldn't he have? About 50 years ahead of them. Wow. That's pretty About crazy. 50 years. Do you know why mm-hmm. that he never went? He was going to go. He was making preparations. Um, so I would assume a war. War was yeah. usually getting in the way of everything. <laughs> Absolutely. The, the French and Indian War? Yeah, yeah, man. Yeah, man. So uh, <laughs> it caused the problem. And that's why they couldn't go back and to, uh, to their little cabin that they built and harvest the corn that was out there. Mm. Uh, French and Indian War started uh, to heat up there and it made everybody pretty occupied with that. went on for seven yep. years. Um, he, uh, he actually served as the, uh, the Virginia's commissary general during the French and Indian War. And uh, he mm-hmm. was present with young George Washington and Daniel Boone at uh, Braddock's defeat in Duquesne with, near modern-day Pittsburgh in 1755. Mm-hmm. So it's pretty neat. He, uh, yeah. he knew these yeah, people. Yeah, pretty neat. He's, I mean, connected to those those big players, especially yeah. you know, Boone and Washington, man. You don't, you're not going to get too many bigger players than those two. And they both were probably very young. You know, he, was a, he would have been the older guy. You know, what's interesting is uh, during the American Revolution, the population of Virginia was about 500,000 people. So here we're talking about another 20 years or so before that. There's a good chance yeah. that the population was probably 300,000 or so, which yeah. is about the population of Lexington. <laughs> yeah. Well, that is, um, that is uh, some comparison to numbers, man. That's, uh, that's unique. Well, that's, yes. that, you, you don't think about that. You don't think right. about that. I mean, that's the size of Lexington. How, con- how yeah. connected, you know, and you would, you yeah. mean, you're not going to know everybody, but uh, those people that were Still. prominent would have definitely known every each other and, mm-hmm. and had many dealings with each other along the way there. Yeah. So. You would you'd have known that guy, Walker, who went out west for so many months. Right, right, yeah. no doubt, no doubt. And uh, later on in 1779, Dr. Thomas Walker was commissioned uh, to create the boundary between Virginia and North Carolina, which today is the boundary of Kentucky and Tennessee. Um, Mm -hmm. He was out there, and they also, uh, Richard Henderson uh, of the Transylvania Company was was, went with him because he had a stake in that. Uh, He got aggravated at him and and left him there. Um, (laughs) But uh, I don't think old Henderson was too good of a guy, really. He seemed to be. (laughs) Well, he was. But that's another story, another time. Kind of aggravated uh, about the situation that happened to him. He thought he was going to be a gazillionaire. He ended up being pretty well off. Mm-hmm. And, well, he was well off to begin with, he, and he still was ended up. He still was issued tons of land, but he wasn't as close to being the uh, gazillionaire that he had planned to be. Uh, um, totally different yeah. story, isn't it? So, uh, <laughs> and and they got it. They, they used him. He was a great negotiator. Um, he was a negotiator at a Treaty of Stanwix, Lockerbie. And even after the Battle of Point Pleasant there in 1774, mm-hmm. uh, he was uh, uh, the 
a, a lead negotiator with uh, for treaties and such like that during there. So very prominent figure. He served in the House of Burgesses uh, there in Virginia. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, do you know who Bannister Tarleton is? Bannister Tarleton. Um, Tarleton. We're talking about Revolutionary War, right? We are, yeah. Um, I mean, he's a colonel, so he's in the war. I don't know much more than that. Have what you seen him? the movie The Is Patriot? He... With no yes. Wilson? Yes. Uh-huh. The bad guy. The guy with the eyes. Oh, okay. Yes. Yeah. Right. yeah. yeah he was a real guy. Oh, he was Bannister. a real guy, and he's a really bad guy. Carlton. Dude. But uh, there's yeah. a, this is another story that uh, it pertains to Walker here, but um, he was making a, a ride out in western Virginia, and he was about mm-hmm. to head to Charlottesville, and he was trying to capture uh, the Virginia, uh, you know, the House of Burgesses, uh, trying to capture mm-hmm. the government. Uh-huh. And there's a guy that uh, uh, we talked about him, uh, Jewett, Jack Jewett, mm-hmm. that uh, made his ride. He ended up settling in Kentucky. He's in, in Woodford County. Um, but, uh, gosh, I keep thinking, I'm trying to keep focused on one story. There's so many other side stories. <laughs> but, but he was able to give word to Thomas Jefferson for him to escape. And uh, mm-hmm. the, the reason that he had time to do that, though, is that Colonel Bannister Tarleton stopped at Dr. Thomas Walker's house and Rouse. Oh. And... Dr. Thomas Walker was able to kind of schmooze him, you know, uh, take their time, ego, yeah. you, you know, keep him occupied yeah. just a little longer. And uh, they think that due to that effort was the reason why Thomas Jefferson escaped. There, there you go. And, and, so, you know, and then a Walker uh, eventually helps uh, and advises Jefferson yeah. as well, right? Absolutely. Yep. Yeah, man. So pretty cool. Kind of, Rounds up what I've got about uh, Dr. Thomas Walker. Is anything you think you would like to add? Not right off. That all hits it pretty much um, uh, with me. Um, I, I got all the. I think I got all my plugs in. All the things I can think about. <laughs> yeah, it's a trip to the moon, is what you said. So. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, man. Um, so. Yeah, so uh, what we got, let's see, Sue says, so why did they always leave in March? Boone left in March, and that's the Trailblazer Wilderness. Uh, guaranteed bad weather. Uh, I guess that, uh, I guess they were ready to rock and roll. They wanted to leave as much time. They yeah. never know what they were going to get into, well, you know? Well, I would think, too, I mean, like game, in the spring, the game is going to be more out and about. Um, maybe I mean not no different than in the fall or in the in the summer, but the game would that would be a reason to leave in the spring. The weather is breaking, even though it's seems to be terrible. Um, yeah. So, but yeah, I would think that's just the best time to go out. Yeah, you got about seven or eight months, you know, before mm-hmm. you're going to have bad weather again. So, mm-hmm. uh, occasionally people step off and uh, later in the year, too late or something. Kind of think about the Donner Party out west that uh, yeah. each other. But uh, up in the Sierra Nevadas, but, uh, literally. But uh, another story. But uh, yeah, man. Yeah. So next <laughs> next week uh, we've got. Uh, you want to? What, what are we talking about next week? Oh, uh, is it Saint Patrick's Day? Is that what it is? Pretty close is to it that coming yeah. up? Yeah, pretty yeah. close to it. Yeah. yeah. So you want to talk about, about those? Uh, those white trash Irish is what you wanted to talk about, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> so the Irish and why they came, when they came, and what reasons they came, and their impact on the America, you know, what we'll talk about next week. Probably throw some Scots Irish in there too. But uh, yeah, there man. So uh, make sure you check out tomorrow. We've got a new thing we're doing. Uh, this was supposed to be uh, Mary Grace's uh, uh, time to uh, on Wednesday night. She's going to be on here talking about different states, but she's got a guest that she's going to have on there tomorrow. Somebody that's uh, not part of our Family Tree Nuts team, but somebody that uh, likes to uh, watch our videos and, and what we do at Family Tree Nuts. She's going to have Lori with her. Uh, Lori lives in California, and she's going to be with her and talk about the history of California. So we're excited oh, about that'd that. That'd be good. Yeah, yeah. We've got, we've got a lot of cool stuff going on. We switched days, too, because we're doing something a little different. Do you want Jordan, you want to walk around here? You want me on camera? Yeah. Are you sure about that? <laughs> sure. Uh-oh. You know, a lot of times you guys don't see. Jordan's Uh-oh. usually clear up in Ohio producing the show. 
But hey guys, uh, there's Jordan right there. We're in Richmond, Kentucky tonight. Woo. Yeah, man. Woo. Awesome. Brilliant. So, yeah, man, he's brilliant. Producing, the, pr- producing the show right here. I can't wait uh, for the Family Tree Nuts party here. Yeah. yeah. Get in the pool. <laughs> the after party. <laughs> Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah man, yeah man, yeah. Thanks, we really appreciate. Uh, you can see Jordan's face. He's the guy that's running the show all the time. So if you hear us say Jordan, Jordan, that's who we're talking to right there. So uh, yeah, man. So what's going on with with you guys at uh, Kentucky History Podcast? Uh, so we got a few episodes coming in the next few weeks. I did an interview with a author. Um, about the uh, murder of Marion Miley that happened here in Kentucky. Um, pretty interesting story. A lot of people probably don't know about it. Uh, it happened right before World War II, so the coverage of it kind of died down. Really interesting story, really interesting uh, topic. But Beverly Bale sat down with me and talked about that. So pretty wow. cool. Pretty, pretty cool. cool. I, I uh, know check it out. nothing about that one. No. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's interesting. It's good. Really cool. Um, really cool. Yeah, yep. we didn't say this earlier, but make sure you guys subscribe to our uh, our YouTube channels if you like this stuff. Uh, we've got tons mm-hmm. of stuff coming out all the time. Uh, we got a new video hitting tomorrow. We're at the video. We're at the gravesite of Johnny Cash. Cool. So that edited man in black comes out. Yeah, man. So, all right, brother. Is there anything else you want to say before we take off? That's all I got, man. Okay. I'll sign off for now. Hope you have a great week, guys. And uh, hey, remember, family tree nuts. Let our nuts find the nuts in your family tree. Henry Bim was born in May of 1815 in Shelby County, Kentucky. He was born to his mother, Mildred Jackson, a slave, and James Bibb, a lawmaker, politician, and slave owner. During his youth, Bibb was often hired to work on other farms. At the age of 18, Henry learned to read from the Bible, and after that, he learned to write as well. In 1834, he married Melinda of Trimble County, Kentucky, who was also a slave, but was owned by William Gatewood. They had one daughter, Mary Frances. James Bibb, Henry's father planned to move to Missouri, so Gatewood bought Henry. In 1837, Bibb escaped and crossed into Ohio and settled in Perrysburg. He returned to Kentucky to try and help Melinda and his daughter escape, but he was captured in Cincinnati. The next day, he escaped again and returned to Perrysburg. In 1839, he attempted to help his family escape again, but was caught again. But this time, he was returned to Gatewood. Gatewood sold the entire family to a slave trader, and they were sent to New Orleans, where they were sold at auction to Francis Whitfield. Bibb tried to escape again, but Whitfield sold Bibb to Native Americans. He escaped the Native Americans and went to Detroit. Henry Bibb gave his first anti-slavery speech in 1844. He went to the Northeast and gave many lectures against slavery. In 1845, he received word that Melinda had remarried. Bibb married Mary E. Miles in 1848. Bibb was an author and wrote his book, Narrative of the Life and Adventures of Henry Bibb, an American Slave, in 1849. The Fugitive Slave Act was passed in 1850, which required any slave to be returned to their owner, even if the slave was in a free state. Bibb moved north to Windsor, Ontario, Canada. He created The Voice of the Fugitive, the first black newspaper, which was a semi-monthly newspaper. He was also reunited with three of his brothers who had escaped to Canada. He organized the Refugee Home Society. This society helped runaway slaves relocate to Canada and purchase farms. With this newspaper, Bibb was able to establish a supportive black community in Canada. Bibb died in 1856 at the age of 41. I hope you've enjoyed learning about Henry Bibb. He was a Kentuckian who stood for the rights of all. A slave who became a free man and pursued his passions is an inspiration to all of us, but is often overlooked. Time and time again, he risked his life for his freedom and then risked it again for his family and others' freedom. He should be remembered and honored as a true Kentuckian. Don't forget to try out audibletrial.com slash kyhistorypod to get a free book of your choosing. 
like, subscribe, and hit the notification button for more Kentucky history content. If you'd like to support the channel, check out our Patreon page at patreon.com slash kyhistorypod. Find us on these social media platforms and check out the Kentucky History Podcast on these podcast platforms for more in-depth history of Kentucky. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. So you've built your family tree and made a ton of amazing discoveries. What a fulfilling experience it is to breathe life back into them. But what are you going to do with all the information that you found? Are you going to let it sit on some computer or some website? Maybe hand off stacks of papers and binders that you have to some relative that may be interested but maybe not be able to make heads or tails of the research that you've done. Let us help honor your ancestors in video. At Family Tree Nuts, we make videos with you at the location of relevance to your ancestors, such as their gravesite, their homes, land, or other location pertaining to them. You tell their story in your words, documenting them forever. The professionally produced videos are published on our YouTube page where they are easily shared with your family members. The videos are also searchable and will be able to be seen for centuries by your descendants. Imagine being able to see a video of one of your ancestors. Well, your descendants are going to be able to do just that. And we have tons of examples that we can share with you. These videos are fun to make, and we can make many of them in just a single day. Don't let those amazing discoveries that you found slip back away into the darkness. Let us help you honor them by, in a sense, keeping them alive forever. Contact us for details.